today we are learning a little bit about 3D figures, shapes, solids, um, surface area and volume. Surface area and volume, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So uh, just a little bit of background, these words polyhedra. Poly Polyhedron, what is that? Well, remember polygon? Polygon meant many sides, and it was like a two-dimensional type of flat representation, right, polygon? A polyhedron, um, it's a solid, it's three-dimensional. And so each of its sides are called faces, and the faces are different polygons. So all the faces are made up of different polygons if you have a polyhedron. 3D, so length, width, and height. Um, an edge is when two faces meet. So this is an edge right over here. Here's one of the edges. Um, a vertex. A vertex is the point where uh, you get the, the edges uh, meeting up. Over here, three or more of them meeting up. And then, so if we're looking at this particular solid, this polyhedron, how many faces are there? You can just count them. How many? One, two, three, four on the sides. Plus you have it at the top and the bottom. There are six of face, the faces. How many edges? Yeah, we're counting them. So one, two, three, four. I'm just counting twelve. where they all meet up. And there's uh, eight, uh, 12 of them, I think, right? And then vertices. How many of these little points? Eight of them. So you can just count them. You can just count them. Um, examples of some polyhedra. So we have to know about prisms, and you may have remembered the prisms. I know when I was in like fifth grade, my teacher had a prism she brought in, and it was a triangular prism, and that meant the bases were triangles, and then they kind of like met up here, and it was like this glass thing, and if you look through it, you got like a rainbow, and the world turned upside down and stuff. You ever do that in like elementary school? No? Science class? So anyway, that's a prism. That one's a triangular prism. You name prisms by their bases. So you think about having two polygons and you stretch them apart. So I took two triangles and I stretched them apart. We call that stretch stretch length the height of a prism. So that goes this way where you turn it upside down. And then these are the bases, the two polygons that you stretched apart. We name them by that base. This is a rectangular prism because the bases are rectangles. With rectangles, it's hard to tell which of the bases, right? Is it these two sides or is it these two sides? You choose, you choose which ones you want to be the base. But if it's not rectangular, you look for the thing that isn't a rectangle. This one has pentagons for bases. We call it a pentagonal prism. And the sides are always going to be these rectangles. That's a prism. A pyramid looks a little like a prism at first, except look, there's only one base. You have one polygon as a base, and then there's like a point where they all meet up. So your sides are made up of triangles, because they meet up at a point, whereas these sides are made up of rectangles. These things are not polyhedra, because their faces are not polygons. Look at the, uh, you know, it's got a round base in a cylinder, it's got a round base in a cone, and a round base in a sphere. These are similar to prisms, and similar, or a lot alike, I don't want to use that word similar, they're a lot like prisms. These are a lot like pyramids, but they're not because they're round there and their sides don't have this. Okay. Euler's theorem is just a fun to know. Uh, Euler being the famous, uh, well, to me, Swiss uh, mathematician, Leonard Euler. So he figured out, amazingly, bases plus vertices, if you add them up, it is the edges plus two. So you can try to use that formula for, no, just count them up, that's fine. If you remember this, it's a check. But um, basically, you count your faces, you count your vertices, it will equal the edges plus two. All right, surface area and lower area. Um, surface area is like the wrapping paper around a solid. How much wrapping paper does it take? And we're going to use this thing called nets to kind of help us see what they are. And I, I did open this website um, earlier. This thing looks like a triangle, and it looks like I drew a little triangle in there. This is a net of what? It's a net of... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, if I put it all the way together, it looks like we have a triangular um, pyramid here. So a net is when you take a polyhedron and then you unfold it. Uh, I've got some other ones here, a cube. I don't even know what a cube is. This is if you were unfold a cube, and there's a, sometimes there's more than one net. 
but this is one um, net for it. And then you can put them all together, you get that three-dimensional shape. Uh, we can get this um, octahedron. That means eight, right? So what's going on here? Whoops. Oh, no, oh, yeah, it's like talks. Um, we can turn this around. We have a, what is that thing? That is a, I, a dodecahedron. Oh, so you have 12 of these things. It's almost a soccer ball. Yeah, almost. Almost, not quite. Uh, this would be hard to place on. But um, now we see what they are. So the idea is this a cosahedron. I think that's 11. Okay. How many not? No, that's 20. Is that 20? Oh, that's 20. Okay. And so again, um, the idea with knowing what a net is, is it helps us figure out uh, surface area. If I wanted to find the surface area of this, I could find the area of one triangle and you know multiply by how 20 bricks that I'm inside I have. So the nets are helpful if we want to figure out surface area. So nets. Yay, nets. So you add up the areas of all the facings. That is surface area. Within surface area, we kind of think of two different things. Lateral area and uh, surface area. Lateral area, lateral means side. So if this was like a funny shaped can of some kind, the lateral area would be maybe where the label goes. And then if I want the surface area, I find that lateral area and I add the lids in, the area of those lids. So lateral area just the sides. Surface area is the lateral area plus the uh, area of those bases. Oh, OK. And here we go. Chris, are you still ready? Still ready for this? Yeah, this work on this. OK, so uh, we have uh, this idea of a right prism versus an oblique prism. A right prism is the height like the, the height and the bases are perfectly nice, 90 degrees. Uh, oblique, they are not. We kind of a wind blew it over a little bit. So for surface area, we're only concerning ourselves with these. So if it says find the surface area, assume it is a right prism uh, if they if they ask for it. Yes, sir. Well, you got to find all these different areas and add them up, right? So you got a job here. When it's right, we can kind of play with it a little bit more. So that's what we're going to do. So if you look on your uh, formula sheet, I'm going to bring my notebook and I'm going to get one. So get your formula sheet. If you look at it, I hope you are. See how they have the little pictures? So this is a rectangular prism, right? So look up rectangular prism. What does it say surface area? Can you find a little picture? Yeah, 2LW plus 2LH plus 2W. So what they're saying on your formula sheet, is find the area of this one, and you've got two of them. There's one on the other side. Find the area of this one, there's two of them. And then find the area of one of the bases. You can't. There's nothing wrong with doing it. You can't. I personally never do it that way. If you look at right next to that picture of the rectangular prism, do you see the uh, triangular prism? See that one on your formula sheet? Everybody's looking? Nobody's looking. Yeah. So what does it say the surface area is of that triangular prism? This thing. I use this one for any prism. Any prism, this will work. I find it's a little bit easier to kind of figure everything out. I lose track of the LWs and the HWs and the, where am I? I lose track of it. I find this one, believe it or not, easier. And uh, you may not believe it when you, you go through it. But how do I get this? So remember what surface area is. I made a net of a triangular prism, but you can imagine any prism here. And so let's see, to find the bases, as part of your um, surface area. I'm using uppercase B represents the area of the base. So in this case, uppercase B is one half little b uh, times the height of the triangle. That's uppercase B represents that entire area. And I need two of them if I'm finding surface area. There's a top lid and a bottom lid. So that's what this represents. Lateral area is the size. So I unfolded it. Let's think about what the lateral area is. I've got a height, and then I've got a width, right? Rectangle, height times width. Well, A, B, and C represent these measures. So what is that whole width? A plus B plus C, and I multiply by H. If I do that, I get the lateral area. Make sense so far? That's what the lateral area is. If I add in the two bases, two areas of the base, I get the whole surface area. 
So I'm focusing on this piece here. A plus B plus C. Think of this fold it up again, right? D goes against this one. When you fold it back up, can we see that this edge will be A units long? Now don't go by the picture. But this will be A because it's folded against it. And this edge here will be C units long. So the perimeter of the base is A plus B plus C. So P, when I use P in these formulas, it's referring to perimeter of the base. So P times H, or I'm writing it as H times P. That's the lateral area. That's this. Plus the length. That's this. Surface area. So it's very important that you realize when you're looking at these formulas, when I say H, I'm referring to the height of the prism. What is height of the prism? It's distance between the bases. If you have shut me off, this is a very common mistake. You don't know what height is. So please turn it back on. Look at what this is. Height is distance between the bases. If these are my two bases. So if you're calling these your bases, then height would go that way. Okay? P represents perimeter of the base. And uppercase B represents the area of the base. So if you want to find area of surface area of any prism, HP plus 2B. If you just want lateral area, HP. So look at this example. Uh, yeah, this is one of those cases you may need an extra piece of paper here because there is actually quite a bit of writing here if you want to do this right. This is not one of those things where I give you a test, you give me a number, oh boy, am I going to mark you wrong. These are little math essays. I want to see how you're getting your answer. Believe me, it is so easy to get the wrong answer. So if I can see how you're trying to get there and there's a little mistake there, that's one thing, but at least I know you're doing it right. Any problem, this is what I want to see. What is the formula that you're using? Yes, sir. Right, and so what if, if, I don't know if the triangle is right, but the prism is right. If it doesn't tell you the prism is right and I ask you the surface area, assume it's the right prism. Yes. And I'm glad you're asking me that because it is something that's confusing. Height is distance between the, the bases. P is perimeter of the base. Uh, uppercase B is area of the base. And it's trying to tell you that on your formula sheet. If you look on your formula sheet, it says abbreviations. See how uppercase B says area of the base? P just says perimeter. So you have to know that means perimeter of the base. So they tell you some things, but they don't tell you everything. So we kind of have to know that. This is important. I am going to look for this. Did you write out your generic formula? General formula, there it is. Be as organized as you know how to be. I am not the neatest handwriting person ever. So, and I know some of us just, we not. But you still have to be organized. I'm going to work on the lateral area piece first, the sides. So I'm going to kind of have a little heading somewhere on my computation. What's H and what's P, right? H is distance between the bases. First of all, what are the bases of this prism? Where are the bases? The triangles are the bases. I took two triangles and I stretched them out. How far did I stretch them? That's your height, the distance between the bases. P is perimeter of the triangle, perimeter of the base. Now let's see, it's hard to see it up here, but there are some congruence markers. So if this one's 8, so is this. So what's perimeter? 8 plus 8 plus 3, which is 19. So if I want to find the lateral area, which is HP, it's going to be uh, H times P, 9.1 times 19. Uh, you know, I, I can just uh, do this out. 9.1 times 19, and I get 172.9. And if the question that asks, what is the lateral area, you're done. The lateral area is 172.9 square meters. That's this face plus the face back here plus the bottom face. All add up to 172.9 square inches. With me so far. Okay? But it said find the surface area, not just lateral area. So I need to find 2B. Here's where it starts getting a little confusing. Area of a triangle is one half H. And now, okay, I got two Bs. This one's a lowercase b. So I'm referring to the base of this triangle. 
the stage looks the same. I'm going to put a little marker here, a little triangle. So I know I'm talking about the height of the triangle and not the height of the prism. And I want two of these. I want two times one half the base of the, the base of the base, right? The base of that triangle times the height of the triangle. And these will cancel out. So 2b, 2 uppercase b, is now b, h of the triangle. So far so good. I'm going to blow this up, and I'm going to turn it around where it's easier for me to see what it looks like. I'm taking this base out so I can see it. There's a side with 3, there's a side with 8, side with 8. If I want this base, the base is 3. Okay, easy enough. Height, height, height. Height of a triangle. Um, it's where you start at the point and you drop a perpendicular to the base. Um, it is true that you could use any base you want. However, when you have an isosceles, you want to kind of drop it here because you're going to get two congruent triangles if you do. Why is that? Well, I can see that the hypotenuses are congruent. I also have a leg that's congruent. You could have said, well, these angles are congruent, the isosceles angle angle side. These two triangles are congruent. So if this whole thing is three, what's this piece right here? And so is this piece, right? Because they are congruent pieces. Why do I care about that? I'm trying to find the height of a triangle. That's this. If I have a right triangle and I know two of the sides, how do I find that third side? Yeah? Pythagorean theorem. Where's my hypotenuse? This guy, the eight. So if I want this h of the triangle, it's going to be the square root of 8 squared minus uh, 1.5 squared. And I'm just going to pause for a second. Who's following? This is a bit confusing. Uh, if you have a question, please ask. Please ask if you're like, what? 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 It's, you have to kind of, I'm, I'm finding basically this height right here. So I can do 1 half base times height. And since I want two of them, it's just going to be base times height. Now, I actually kind of kept this in the square root form uh, just because I didn't want to estimate. I wanted to get the most accurate thing I could. So uh, what's going on here? It's 172.9 plus 3 times this big mess. And that's what I'm going to put in my calculator. Again, I want to be as accurate as I can. You could estimate here. The more you estimate, the less accurate your answer is. So I'm trying to do it as late as I possibly can in the problem surface area is the lateral area plus 2 uppercase B, which we worked out to be 3 times uh, the square root of, and I'm getting height now, 8 squared minus 1.5 squared. Good answer. Uh, when it doesn't say how to round, round to the nearest hundred, I'm getting right, 196.47. And these are square units. This is still area. Surface area is area. Yes, sir. Um, that base times height. Oh, base times height. Now I'm back to this whole base. So you see, you've got to be so careful with this. Now, uh, if you went, you estimated here. You probably got a slightly different number, which is okay. You get three times the square root of. That's about 23.57. And so you could say it's 172.9 and 23.57 to get back here. So um, we'll follow it. Because this one is probably the hardest surface area you're going to do. The, the key to these is write out the base formula here without any very general form formula. Fill in the pieces, be very organized. Some of you are not very organized that last test, man. Some of them I could not read at all. Some of them are great. Be great. Be where I can figure out what you're doing. Yeah. What did you get the height from? The height? Which height? We have two heights. We have this H, which is the height which of the prism height, distance between the bases. And then there's this height, the height of the triangle in the base. So which height? The second one. I, I blew this up a little bit, right? And I said, okay, I'm going to draw an altitude because triangles are one half base times height. So here's the base of three. How to figure this guy out? So because they're congruent triangles, that's 1.5 times 8. I used the Pythagorean theorem to find this side. It's a 7 point something or other. And you all said done. Then I took that times.
times that. Because I need two of these happy sides. It's complicated. It is. This is going to be like, you've got to be so careful. This one is the hardest one. Yes? It's the perimeter of the base. Perimeter of the base. Perimeter of the base, 3 plus 8 plus 8. Yes? For C, is the square perimeter. Oh, can I? Wait till we get there, okay? It is a square perimeter. Wait till we get there. Okay. Um, cylinders. Okay, you did the worst one, okay? That was the worst one there is. So it's only going to get better from here. So what is that? You know, cylinders are really the same thing. It's the lateral area plus the lids. It's like, you know, soup can. Um, it's going to be the lateral area plus 2B, just like it was um, for prisms. However, what's my, what's my base? This is a circle. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared, so that's why I have 2 pi r squared. Because that's 2B. That's this. Lateral area comes out to 2 pi r h. Really? Uh, where is that? That's this one. Okay, how did I get it? Um, here's my can. I took the label off the soup can, and these are the two lids. So what is this lateral area? What is that? Well, the height is the same thing. Distance between the bases. Well, what's this? Well, this is, when you wrap it around, that's a circumference. And a circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So when you unwrap it, this whole thing is 2 pi r. So this area, 2 pi r times h, that's where that lateral area comes from. It's lateral area, the soup can label, plus the two lids. 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. And I'm looking at your paper there. That's what it says on your paper for surface area if you look at your formula sheet. Formula sheet, right? This is the thing you get for free. I'll give it to you on the test. You can use it on the uh, SOL. Um, but what I do with this is I factor out the 2 pi r, and when I factor out the 2 pi r, you get an h plus r. Generally speaking, I find this a little bit easier to work with. You don't have to do that. You can work with this. Generally speaking, this is easier. Now, if they just say find the lateral area, just find this piece of it. If they just want lateral area. They're just asking for the soup can label. Okay. So it is the same thing, really. It's just because we're working with circles. It looks different. Uh, so here's an example which I don't think is on your paper. So we'll just look at this one here. It's not on your paper. But if I want to find the surface area of the cylinder, surface area of the cylinder is 2 pi r times h plus r. You really want to write out the general form formula first. You will make less mistakes if you do. Is it easy to make mistakes doing this? Yes! <coughs> it is crazy easy to make mistakes doing this. Write this out first. The only things I need to find are R and H. Do I know those things based on the picture? What's R? Six. What's H? The distance between the bases. I know all the pieces. So 2 pi R uh, times H plus R. So let's see. 6 times 2, that's 12 pi times, uh, is that 10 pi? which means I can multiply my numbers. And again, I like not putting pi in until my very last step. Oops. Uh, is 130.8 pi. Again, if I wanted exact units on here. Um, and then multiply by pi. This uh, is Pi. So 410.92 approximately. And these are square units because it's area. It is area. So that would be this example, which is not on your paper. We're just working out the formula. This one, I think, is on your paper. This one is some example B on the bottom of page one. Uh, they're giving you the surface area, and they're giving you the radius, but they're not giving you H. So again, you start with the formula. Uh, this goes back to algebra when you learned how to solve for a variable. Remember what we're solving for H. Uh, let's see if I can rewrite this thing so I get h equals. So what do I do first? Divide by 2 pi r. I don't need to do that. When I do that, I get h plus r equals surface area over 2 pi r. I'm just going slow here. I'm solving for h. Subtract r from both sides. Right? What do you think? This is straight algebra. 
solving for a variable. Do we agree? Now it's a matter of, again, I'm trying to find each, so let's plug in. Surface area, 168.09 over 2 pi r. Well, 2 times r, let's just do that. What's my r? 4. So that means 2r is 8. So this is over 8 pi minus my radius of 4. Okay? Yeah? And now I'm going to use my calculator as my last step. I'm not doing any kind of estimating in between. I don't have to. So 168.09 divided by 8 pi. This has to be in parentheses at 8 pi. You want to group them. If you don't, it's going to divide by 8 and multiply that whole thing by pi. Not what I want. And then I need to subtract 4. This is approximately 2.69 meters. Correct? So you got your algebra needs to be tip top here. You need to be really, really careful making substitutions. You need to be really, really careful when you put it in your calculator. This has to be grouped in the calculator or it will use the order of operations in a way you probably don't want. What do you think so far? You got it. Okay. Pyramid. Okay. Remind us what a pyramid is. It's got, we're working with regular pyramids when we're doing a surface area. The polygon is regular on the base. What does that mean again? It's regular polygon? Yes, sir? Yeah, all sides are congruent there. And the angles. So if you see a rectangular one, it's a square. Question? The lateral area for the right node to pi r l. Okay, let me, let me just get through the introductory part. We'll talk about that. There's a new word here you may not know. Slant height, also known as lateral height. What does that do? So I'm looking at um, my, my pyramid. Notice how there's triangle sides, right? Pyramids have triangle sides. The slant height is the height of the triangle sides. So see how it's slanting? When you kind of look at the pyramid, it's all a slant. But it's the height of one of those triangles. Um, I think I've got a note here. So if you unfold this rectangular pyramid, uh, this is the slant height, we use L. Sometimes called lateral height, sometimes called slant height, but that's what lowercase l means. So uh, surface area is the lateral area, which is all the triangles, plus uppercase B, area of the base. Lateral area is one half L times B, what? But he is perimeter of the base. Okay, one of the triangles, is one half LP. I've got four of these triangles. So what happens here? Uh, oh yeah, I want to put the uh, four and the, the uh, put these together. You get P because that's perimeter. So it's one half lateral or slant height times perimeter of the base. That's the lateral area. And then you're going to add to the lateral area this area you get to your base. Um, I so, okay. let's see how we do this. This one is uh, example C on the bottom. Example C on the bottom. Write this out. SA is one half lateral, hair, lateral height or slant height times perimeter of the base plus uppercase B, the area of the base. Write that out first. Figure out, let's work on one half LP. Let's work on that part first. LA. Lateral area. What's L? What's the slant height in this picture? Yep, six. Slant height is this height, height of triangle side. What's the perimeter of the base? Perimeter of the base, looking at this picture. Regular pyramid, means it's a regular polygon in the base. So Thomas, what is the perimeter? 16, it's 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So the lateral area of this pyramid is 1 half, 6 times 16, which is 48 uh, square yards. If they just said find the lateral area, you would be done. But it says find the surface area. Now I have to find the area of the base. So what is uppercase B, area of the base? Right, base 4 times 4. 4 times 4, it's also 16. This just so happens. Add those together, it is 64. 64 square yards.
height is the surface area of this pyramid. My height. Okay. And again, these are all under you. That definitely needs a formula sheet. A lot of them to remember. Surface area comes very, very similar. We don't have time to finish this. Um, so a right cone, and again, with surface area, assume we're all working with these right cones. So straight up and down here, you'll have a circle base. The vertex will be right over the center of the circle. Uh, the slant height is the same thing as this guy. Uh, so lateral area plus pi r squared, right, because that is the circle there. Uh, what is the lateral area? It's pi r l. Uh, we could go into this. It all has to do with finding the sector area of the circle. So this one is um, online if you kind of want to work this through. For now, I think it's too much. So you're going to take me on faith here. Pi RL is the lateral area. It's the ice cream cone part. And the lid is, of course, pi R squared. I factored out the pi R to get that L plus R. So if we want to do an example line, we do. Uh, it's going to be this guy. So uh, surface area is pi R uh, L plus pi r squared, and I'm going with this one because it said find the lateral area and find the surface area. This is the lateral area. So lateral area, pi times what's r? Nine. What's l? Well, no, that's the height. Lateral area is the slant height, that's this. So if you were to slice this in half, do you see that right triangle? So this is nine and this is 12. I can use the factor here. Or I can notice divide by three, divide by three. This is a three, four, five triangle in size. Multiply that by three, that's 15. So be careful. Do you want lateral height or height? That's height. This is slant height. So nine times 15 is something. And it is, no, no. Is it? No, it's not. Okay, 135. 135? I promise. Okay, yes. So that is your lateral area. Exactly. We'll take that 135, multiply by pi to get an approximation. It's approximately 424.12. Uh, units, inches. Okay. Then I have to find the surface area. So this is the answer to part one of the question. That's lateral area. Now to find the surface area, I have to find B, which is pi r squared, which is uh, 81 pi, because r is 9. So the whole thing is going to be 135 pi plus 81 pi. Uh, 135 plus 81 is 216, I think. And uh, I don't know what that is. So I have to say 216 times uh, pi is approximately 678.58. Square inches, surface area. Lateral area, surface area. Oh, okay. I know you're over here. It's good. Lunch. You have two minutes. So let me just say, uh, first of all, make sure you've written this down. When you come back from lunch and don't forget, if you look on the back under the U-tries, the first few four questions are surface area questions. So you can work on that when you return uh, from lunch. Write out the formula. SA equals HP plus 2 uppercase B. I, uh, height of the pyramid, perimeter of the base, plus 2 times the area of the base. Work on HP. H is the distance between the pyramids. B is the perimeter of the base. This looks like it is uh, S of the collateral.
So uh, surface area we're finding, we have to be extremely organized. Let's look at the, the volume of prisms. Now, the one thing I, I kind of love about this unit, the area and the volume, is that you're doing calculus. Uh, I love it. Volume is definitely a, it's always area. Area is, um, you know, you integrate under a curve, and volume is you integrate under kind of a 3D curve. So you're kind of doing uh, calculus and integration when you're doing this. You don't even know it. But if you kind of get these formulas, You'll see it again in calculus someday, and I want you to be sitting in calculus and go, oh, this is pretty sort told us about this. I don't think it's going to happen, but you know. So anyway, volume, what is volume? Volume is the number of cubic units that fit into the interior of a solid. How many cubes are inside some solid 3D shape? Uh, when you want to find the volume of a prism, look how much simpler this is than surface area, at least the formula. So again, what's uppercase B mean? Area of, the area of the base, and what's H? Height, the, the distance between the two bases. So basically what's kind of happening, and this is a calculus thing, is you figure out this area, and then it's that area times how high you have to go. You think about, so you find this area, base times height, or you know, length times width of that rectangle, and then we have H of them, so we multiply by H. It's kind of a calculus thing. So that's what we're doing. If we can kind of see that in the formula, it almost makes sense a little bit. So, um, uh, and we have the same idea of right and oblique. And when we were doing surface area, I kind of made a big deal to say, just assume they are right when you're working with the surface area. With volume, uh, it doesn't matter. The same formula will work for a right prism or an oblique prism. So if you think of this as a stack of papers, and maybe the wind kind of blew the stack of papers over, uh, it's still the same volume in there, whether it's straight up and down or moved to the side. It is the same formula. If this is uh, uppercase B times H, so is this one. And that, remember that this height now is top to bottom. You don't slant it. That's more like a slanted type of height. You want straight up and down always when we're measuring height. So here is example A for volume. Find the volume of this prism. Again, you write out the formula with nothing, right? It's a capital B times an H. Area of the base times the height, which is the distance between the bases. Let's work on area of the base. Mike, what kind of a prism is this? Trapezoidal prism. You look at the bases. How do I know that's the base? Maybe because I took two trapezoids and I stretched them out. So how do you find the area of that base, uppercase B? I need the area of the trapezoid. I remember this area because I know I, I average those bases. So I'm going to add them together, divide by 2, and multiply by the height of the trapezoid. I'm putting a little note for myself that I'm not taking the height of the pyramid here. I'm just working with this base. So what do I have here? One half. Well, one of my bases is 16. The other one, oh, it's down here. It's 8. 16. Wow, that's a mess. That's a big mess. Plus 8. And then what's the height of my base? That's this 4. Oh, so what do I have here? Half of 4, that's 2. And 16 plus 8 is 24. So it looks like uh, my area of the base, if I did this right, no guarantees there, is... It's still not right here. What did I do wrong? That's 24 times 2 is 48. So that's my uppercase B. What's my height of the prism? 6. That's this. Distance between the bases. 48 times 6. I sure hope it's 288. And then what are my units? When you're working with a volume, it's how many cubes fit in. 
So these are cubic, yeah, you knew this, right? Cubic centimeters, cubic centimeters. So again, make sure you have your right units there. Much simpler, isn't it? Because it would be a lot harder finding surface area. Yes? This? I made a little trapezoid there to remind myself I'm finding the height of the trapezoid, not the height of the prism. Because this is where we start getting a little confused. What? I can't hear you. What? There's example A. All right, example B is working with volumes of cylinders. And cylinders are kind of just curvy prisms in a way. So it's the same formula. V equals uppercase B, the area of the base, times the height, the distance between the two bases. With a cylinder, my base is a circle, right? So what is area of a circle? Pi r squared. So uh, I get this formula. It's B H, uppercase B H. And I know what B is, it's pi r squared H. And again, oblique cylinders, if you have the leaning tower, he's uh, leaning a little bit, but same volume inside, same volume, same formula. So here's an oblique cylinder, that's example B. You write the formula, V equals uppercase B times H, area of the base times the distance between the bases. So let's see, area of the base is pi r squared times H. Okay, that's the cylinder pi times 7 squared. Now what's h here? 10. It, height is always, you drop the penny, it falls straight down, and it's going to be in altitude. So don't measure this way. That's like a slant height kind of thing. We want the exact up and down height. Times 10. So it's pi times 49 times 10. Well, that's easy enough. 490 pi would be the exact volume. But if we multiply that by pi, Here's this guy here, 490 times pi here is, to the nearest hundred, because it didn't tell me how to round, 1539.38. And my units are cubic centimeters. And don't worry, there's a little three there. Make that much easier, right? All right, let's look at pyramids and cones. They are, again, pyramids and cones are very, um, shapes that are very much alike. It's just one uses pentagons, or sorry, not pentagons, polygons, and the other is kind of curvy. So if you think of a pyramid, give me one second there. If you think of a prism, and I want to carve a pyramid, I have to chip away. You would have to chip away two-thirds of this cube to get to the pyramid. Uh, so we say that it's one-third times the volume of, as if we did, it was that entire rectangular prism there. So volume of a pyramid or a cone is one-third of the prism or cylinder that it's coming from. One-third of a case B times H. Cones are one-third pi r squared H. Same, it's the same formula, it's just our uppercase B is pi r squared because our base is a circle. Same thing. So, uh, and it works for obliques. So if they're not perfectly right, they're, they're tilted a little bit, use the same formula. So find the volume of this guy, this is example C on your paper there. So V equals one-third uppercase V times H. One-third times area of the base uh, and the height of the pyramid. Well, let's see, what's B? How do I find the area of this base? Uh, it does not say this is A, right? It should have said that, but it doesn't, and it is. So then what is my area down here? 36, right, six squared. That times that, and so that's what goes here. How high is this pyramid? You always start from the vertex. You got the pyramid straight down, right? So you have this right angle. This height is 13. So I just multiply that out. One third times 36 uh, times uh, 13. 156. Yeah. Okay. Cubic yards, because how many cubes will fit inside that pyramid? What? Yeah, that's right. uh, this is a cone. So uh, it's really the same thing. It's one third of a cylinder. So one third pi r squared h. Uh, r they're telling us. H they're also telling us. Pretty easy, this one. One third times pi times 3.3 .3 squared uh, times 6.8. That's my height. Okay, well, I'll write my calculator on this one. 
So I'm going to do one third. And remember, don't don't do point three. Type in one third in parentheses. There's your fraction. Uh, times three point three squared times six point eight. Right now, I'm just getting the number that goes in front of the pi. Uh, is that right? Maybe. I hope so. Twenty-four point six eight four. I'm not rounding yet. I want to kind of, if I don't have to round, don't do it yet until the very end. Uh, times pi times pi, and I'm getting approximately 77.55 a cubic centimeters. And how many fit inside? So it's a little easier, right? I think that it is. Now be careful of, of what you're doing. Uh, if this had wanted surface area, you're going to have to figure out slant height. If they've given you slant height and they want volume, then you need to use a right triangle formula to go figure out what the height is. So always look and see what you have first. So we did those first four of the U tries. Now do some of these volume ones. Now I'll, I'll put the answers up for you. You can check how you did uh, on these. And there's a few on the other page as well. I'm just going to scroll through. I'll scroll back. But the answers are, um, are up. And then we can, uh, we can check.